the Course is really teaching us, Spirit is teaching us that we have to bring the illusions to the truth. We can't bring God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit into this world. You know, like say, I got a crazy life, will you please fix it? Mm. You know, and more like the Spirit is like saying, bring everything you believe about your life in this world, and, and time and space actually, to back to me and it will disappear. Bring, bring all of your crazy beliefs to the light and you'll see it was just it was just your imagination it was just this dark dragon this this crazy tiny mad idea that you had buried and kept hidden and then you kept trying to fix it in form you know trying to smooth it over make it work out oh it's going to get better I'll just give him one more try just give her, give him one more try, one more, just and not one more try, and and okay, one more try, and you know after 25 years of one more try, and you're all stressed out and anxious, you know it's just been false empathy, false empathy, false empathy, and the Holy Spirit is patiently saying, come, come to me, let's do this with true empathy, let's bring the darkness to the light. So I I really feel that that you know both what played out before and in the dream. Um, that the Bible had taught us, let your yea be yea and let your nay be nay. And for some of us, we have associated yes with God and no is a bad word, but actually not so to the Holy Spirit. If you authentically go on this journey, you're going to end up having the Holy Spirit say no to a lot of things. I've had to say no a lot in this parable and, and I could feel the joy of the presence of the Spirit behind the nose. It wasn't a no in the sense of dismissal, there was no sense of rejection, there was no sense of putting down or wrongdoing. I remember the first time I started to practice with this was years ago, when I would be praying, meditating, I'd be getting into these deep mystical states, and my, my mother would come, would invite me to all kinds of different things, and the way the Spirit would come out would be, thank you so much for asking me, or thank you so much for including me, thank you so much for inviting me. The graciousness of the Spirit was always there with a thank you. And no, I don't think I'm going to be coming. Or or sometimes it would even be, say, I, I'll just have to be in the moment, because I was living more in the moment instead of doing so much planning, even though that was the old way, everything is planned out days and weeks and months in advance, I was becoming, allowing myself to be more spontaneous and just let the Spirit guide me moment by moment, which seemed to be reflected back as, come on, just give me a yes or no. Sometimes I would have to say, I, I'll have to see and leave it at that and stay in the strength of that. And sometimes when the time came, I would go and or not go. You know, I really started to become 100% intuitive. 100% in alignment with spirit, so that took away all of the, the conflict. But I did go through that, what you're describing, where I followed what was, what truly felt was in my heart, and then I would see the role of the accuser rear up. I would see um, fear, doubt, guilt, you know, all these uh, accusations, you know, come. We're all going to have to walk through it. We just have to be able to see all that, like you did with those characters that look like the KKK. You could just kind of walk right through them. And when we really get into the strength of, of choosing with the Spirit, there's nothing that can, can threaten us at all. The fear leaves. You know, now I live just a completely fearless life. There's just no fear whatsoever. But it's just been allowing all the darkness to come up and say, Yeah, I'm not going to hide and protect it. No, it's not worth, I'm not going to use any kind of defense mechanism, I'm not going to stuff it down anymore, I'm just going to let it fully come up and, and really come and go. Go, to, go back to the light.